Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Bear Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a super simple way on creating and customizing your own case for your PCB board. So let's get started. Now I've recently read an article from Tom's Hardware, which I'll leave a link down in the description below on indicating this idea. And as soon as I saw the first post or the image of it using Inkscape to design a case for your boards, I instantly knew that that was actually a pretty good idea. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we are gonna be using Inkscape and a free software called Tinkercad123 to design your PCB board just like this one here. Now I've used FreeCAD, but I find that FreeCAD has a pretty steep learning curve to get started to even design something similar to this. And Inkscape is just a free drawing software that I actually use a lot of for my laser cutting or laser designs. So I only know the very basics of Inkscape and I was able to do what I needed to do to achieve this 3D print. So I find it pretty easy. Anyway, to jump into it, we are gonna be using my Ubuntu desktop. And yes, I swapped over from Solus. There is gonna be a video out for that, but we are on Ubuntu, fresh install. And the first thing we need to do is grab ourselves Inkscape. So I'm gonna to go to software and search for Inkscape. Again, you can actually go to their website and they have a free uh, version for Windows. I'm just gonna install whatever version there is here. And this is gonna be using Snap, I guess. Let's see if the same version I've been using in Windows because I've tested this build already just to see how easy it is. Now, while we're waiting for that, we also need a mechanical drawing of the board that you're gonna be uh, designing the, the case for. So in my case, I'm gonna be using Raspberry Pi Pico and I'm gonna need W, mechanical drawing. And let's see if I can find one. Okay, this is for Raspberry Pi Zero. I don't need Raspberry Pi Zero. I need the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, something similar to this. Did I? Let's see. Pico, Pico. Let's get rid of the word Pi. We'll do Pico. And these are still zeros. Zeros. Okay, this is similar to what I need. Not exact because this is not the W but the uh, measurements are the same. So we should be able to use this. I'm gonna open this in a new tab and see if I could just download um, this mechanical drawing right over here. Where did it go? Right here. So save image as, and we'll save it there. Uh, honestly, I don't even know what format that was. So let's go into downloads and see what format that was. It's a WebP. That's not what I want. Open image in new tab. And this is a PNG, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna W get that. So we're gonna head over to downloads, W get, paste that link, and then now we actually have the PNG instead. Um, there's an easier way to do it. I just want to grab the picture as soon as possible. So now that we have the mechanical drawing of the picture that we need, okay, that just weirded out. And we have our Inkscape, we are gonna, try to get something done. So first let's boot up Inkscape and I'm not super huge fan of Snap Store. It does take a while to load this stuff. I'm gonna use default, thanks, and I'm just gonna make a new document. I'm not even caring what size it is. As long as I have a new document in place, um, I could open, download, and my image. Let's do that. Okay, so here is our drawing the mechanical drawing of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Next, what we need to do here is just create a box. So in this box, what we're gonna do is overlay this image. And what I wanna do first is change the opacity on the bottom left to 75%. This way we have some transparency and we can see what we're working with. Now, we know from the mechanical drawing, this is 51 by 21. So we're gonna modify this to that size. We're gonna do fifth width 51 and height, no, sorry. Uh, width would be 21 and height would be 51. So now we know it's in, oh, not pixels. I need to change this to millimeters. 51 and, no, 51 here, 21 here. So width and height. So this is what we got going on. It's in millimeters because that's what everything is set up to be. And then now we need to shrink this. Holding control will actually scale it 
uh, without modifying the size. Like if I don't hold control, it'll turn into wider, or thinner, like that. So you need to hold control to get the appropriate sizing. Now holding control again, you could zoom in and kind of like fit the board into that drawing that you have. Um, try to get it as, I guess, precise as possible because everything you draw along those lines will then be the size of everything. So holding Alt and up, left, right, down arrow will move these by one millimeter. So you could kind of like size it to where you want. And this seems to be like where I want to be. All right, so now that we have our little main board all set up, okay, this is a little, the picture might be like a hair too big. So let me just scale that down just a little bit more. There you go. I kind of have like a pretty good uh, image going on over here. Now, before we change anything, I'm gonna go back into my rectangle tool and I am gonna, you see how there's a square on this edge and a round one on this? This one will actually curve the edges and give you that type of design. So now I have like some sort of a curved edge if you want, if you want that type of design. Um, now that we got our bottom board, we're gonna duplicate it with Control D and move that off to the side. We're gonna use that later on, but for now, we just need uh, a main base. So now this is gonna be the bottom of the board. So I'm gonna use a circle and I'm gonna start drilling out the holes. Uh, this is a 2.1 millimeter hole as, as said from here. It's like a 2.1 millimeter hole or something like that. And what, since I have the circle tool, what I'm gonna do now is hold, control and shift at the same time. Try to find the center of this and expand this out to that hole. Now, again, you don't have to be super perfect because you could use Alt and up arrow to move it to wherever you need to be. And this moves it like by one pixel. And then once you get it to that area, you then can duplicate this, okay? And then move it off to the side. Now you could drag it, but remember to hold control to drag it because this will actually keep it, you know, like in that area. And then again, double check this side to make sure it's in the circle. And if it's not, hold Alt to move the arrow keys and you could kind of get it in that area. Don't go up and down anymore because up and down will be like different from that side. So now that I got these two, I'm gonna take that, hold Shift and select the second piece. And now I am gonna duplicate this and move it down to the bottom. Zoom in. and kind of just get it right in that area. All right, so now that I got those holes in, I'm gonna hold shift on here, hold shift on here, and now I got my four pieces. I'm gonna use path and then combine. Now that becomes its own set of grid. So I will duplicate this again because I will be using this for another project, I mean for another piece. So now what I could do is select the four circles, then the board, path, and use difference. So now I just punch four holes. This is where my screw is gonna go. So now I got the bottom board with the four holes exactly where it needs to be. So we can now duplicate this piece, and now we have a top piece and a bottom piece with the holes, okay? Now to make this other outside piece, the middle piece, you could say, uh, what you can do is start erasing the parts that you don't need. So over here, I could take this, and you see how it's still rounded edges? You can either fix that by changing the radius up here to back to zero, or you could keep it in there if you want. It's really up to you guys. But now that I have that piece here, I'm gonna take this, take that piece, and use the align tool. Where is my align? Align and distribute right here, and square them off to the middle, and then I could layer, I mean a uh, path, and use difference. So now I wiped out this piece for that part just so I know that I could squeeze the USB charger over here, or the micro USB. I don't need the middle section, so I'm gonna take this, make a radius of three, okay? And I am just gonna grab this and go like here doesn't have to be perfect because you could always choose the two, hold shift and choose the two, line them back up together, 
and then path and difference. There you go. So now you got this piece. Now for um, the Raspberry Pi Pico W, there are chips down here. Uh, we don't have the exact proper mechanical drawing for the W, but if you are using just the regular Pi, uh, the Pico, you can leave it like this now. And that is your middle piece. So now I could duplicate this just in case. Okay. Duplicate this just in case. And you know what? While I have it, kind of put it on oops kind of put on top as square as i can get it because i should have done this earlier and i am gonna take a rectangle tool notch out the button hold shift and select the top and then path and use difference and now i could press the button through the top case so there we have the bottom the mid and the top. So next step is now that we drew everything out, we need to export them. So I'm gonna to go to file, export, and export selected piece only. So I'm gonna select this piece. Make sure it's in this square because I'm outside of it. So make sure it's in this square. It will automatically export it. So don't worry about the entire canvas. It's not gonna take that into effect. You just need to know where this is. Now we're gonna change the portable uh, PNG over to SVG, plain SVG change the location and it's going to say png over here but it, don't worry about it it's not it's going to save as svg and we'll just call this piece um honestly what is this piece this is bottom so we're going to call this bottom and save we're going to take this piece because it's now selected and we're going to change this and call this it is in my documents top save and then now we are gonna choose this piece and we're gonna call this, save into my document, mid, save. All right, so now that we got all the three pieces, we can minimize this, uh, edit it later if we want to. Go into our browser and go to Tinkercad123. You do need an account with them. Okay, so all you have to do right now is go to your documents and you could drag the parts that you have. So I'm gonna drag bottom, just import that. And you could double check this. So you could see if I click on the bottom corner, it's 51 by 21. So the measurements are correct. And if I was to import the other stuff, I could import my mid, import, give it a second and then import the top piece, import. And there we have all three pieces. Now, the height of it is not what we wanted, but it did extrude that image for us. So I'm gonna set this to two millimeters. Let me close this out. Two millimeter height. Same goes for this one. I'm gonna change this to two millimeter height because the USB port is about two millimeters. And then this one, you could change to two millimeter height as well. And there we have all three pieces. I would almost automatically print these two out together. So what you can do is just export these, select the two objects and STL. And then I would export this one individually so I could change the color of it. So I would just export this to another STL. And there we have it. We have our three pieces of the case that we are going to print. I would still recommend using FreeCAD if you wanted to make like an actual housing or a box for a case. Uh, you can do it with this with a little bit of finessing because if we jump back into this, you can actually take this piece, all right, and uh, say this is the bottom and you wanted to join these two together. What you can do is actually just move this up in height. Oops, move this up in height, okay, over here. And instead of two millimeters, you want to move it up by four, jam them together, okay? You could take these two, uh, align them together here and then here, and then select them again and then union them. And then now it's one piece. 
So you can also like make it so it's an actual case if you wanted to, and then you can export this as well. But that's really up to you how you want to play around with this case. This only could get you so far, but it's super easy and you don't have to learn FreeCAD. It's, it's, the learning curve for FreeCAD is pretty large, but once you get it, you can design something similar to this. Here it is the case that we just printed, the bottom, the mid, and then the top. When you sandwich them together, it's a pretty nice case for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now this isn't the best ideal method to create cases for your boards, but the measurements are there for the mechanical drawings. If, especially if you've got the holes and you wanted something quick, you can use this to design something. Anyway, that is it for me guys. This was a super quick tutorial on how to 3D design your custom cases for your boards with the mechanical drawing. If you have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If I missed some steps that I could have done maybe a little bit easier on Inkscape, let me know down in the comments below as well. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.